Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. This time we're going to be talking about field of view settings, that is your FOV settings. Um, I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks that I use. Um, I get a lot of questions about what field of view I'm using and, you know, do I use the same field of view in every car? The answer is actually no. I tend to switch and change it up a little bit because different cars have uh, different visibility, you know, by the, the actual frame of the car sometimes can get in the way depending on what car you're driving and um it can be a difficult thing to actually get yourself comfortable but i promise you if you do get the right field of view it definitely definitely helps and aids towards your time because field of view settings is such a, a weird thing if you don't know what that is that's sort of your perception of distance and speed um from your sitting position to the track outside of you so um it can become quite difficult if you've got the wrong field of view settings and that's why i so if you used to stay away from the playstation because that was one thing you couldn't change you couldn't change the fov setting so let's go into the field of view settings which i have actually defaulted so let's quickly go into them you can see at 54 fov now there is an actual way to measure your correct fov settings i believe it is your distance from your eyes to the screen with the width of your screen you have to times that or something like that and then you come up with the answer of what your perfect fov is but for me, when I tried that, um, it, I was sort of too zoomed in towards the screen. Um, and you have to bear in mind, some people have triple screens. Some people have VR headsets, which they're able to look left and right, look out the windows of the car. They're able to judge distance between competitors and cars next to you and stuff like that. And if you're on a singular screen like I am, it's much, much harder to be able to judge the distance while being in battles and being able to see where everyone is around you. So. Um, 54 for me the main issue with this field of view is your perception of speed is a little bit quicker it means the track is coming towards you a lot faster and although some people like the perception of very high speed it also makes hitting apexes a little bit more difficult um for me having a, a much closer field of view helps in terms of being able to hit your apexes being more consistent on laps and stuff like that and actually sounds weird but when you zoom the field of view in a bit more the car always feels as if it just turns in a little bit more it's, it's very weird but um i'm going to show you typically what i would run as a field of view bearing in mind there are two in-car cameras that most people tend to use okay um first let's have a look at the two cameras there is this one where you can see the steering wheel like that and you can see when i turn my steering wheel there is a little bit of a the camera sort of moves the wheel a little bit i've actually changed that um because i like if i am using this particular camera i do like to look into the corner a little bit just because i don't have you know the the triple screen so i like to sort of just sort of turn the camera towards the apex a little bit but most of the time i actually use this in car camera which is the sort of static camera that doesn't really move with the other camera you get a lot of movement while driving I think this camera actually I've got settings on. So let me go down. I'm going to turn these settings off again. Um, let's default these settings. Yeah. Okay, now, for most people, it might not look that different, but I can tell the difference pretty much straight away. So that'll be again on like 54. And of course, the perception of speed is a little bit different. So if we drive around a little bit now. Some people just get on and just use the default settings. I'm very funny with being completely comfortable before I even drive the car. Okay, well, loads of understeer with the default safe setup, I should think that was. But anyway, let's go into the field of view settings and I'll show you what typically I would change. First of all, I feel like 54 is almost too far away. Now you can manipulate the distance 
and the FOV. So you feel like it's sat in a similar position, but the track feels a lot closer to you, which allows you to approach corners a little bit more with a bit more accuracy. And when you when you get used to it, you can become much more, um, you know, you can you're able to hit the lines on a consistent basis. So I normally drop my FOV down to between 38 and 41. OK, so let's say that that seems very, very zoomed in. Now, for me, I normally add a bit of height as well. And then we use the distance to, to push the camera back a little bit just so I can see a little bit more in the car. I don't like to see this bar here. I think sometimes it's too much, especially in, depending on what car you're in. In the Lexus, it is very bad. Um, so let's push that back in round about there is okay for me and again what you can do is um the dashboard display hud you can put that to on and that way this actually shows up a little bit higher so you can see all of your telemetry and everything you need to see without having it cut off by the you know by your tv screen or whatnot so let's put that on and see how it looks Now the, the actual speed perception doesn't actually look the same, it looks a little slower. But as you can see the track seems much closer towards me now. And that that, that is what I meant with the perception of distance and speed. Now the track's closer towards me, I feel more you know more engaged towards the track and i feel like i can attack more i can be you know i can push the car right to the edge of the circuit knowing that i can see exactly where my car is when you're sort of sat further back and your field of view is much wider the perception of speed is so fast you don't have time to judge exactly where you're placing the car into corners that's why if you look at a lot of the guys who stream this game well, a lot of them will be on either extremely uh, curved wide screens or triple screens but their camera is very very the fov is very zoomed in you know and that that's what helps them that's what helps them with the accuracy and hitting them lines because you know the best drivers on this game they use up so much of the track that is the one thing you can take away from watching these guys they use absolutely every single ounce of the track to get the white line they're literally almost with wheels on the grass as they're turning in because they maximize on all of the track they maximize the entry apex the exits and that's a lot of the time where they get their speed from so this is the camera that i tend to use the majority of the time um let's just drive so i can change camera but again i see i see a lot of people not this camera a lot of people will be using this camera okay and this camera's got a lot more movement and again the field of view the distance is a bit further away and for me, the track feels like too far away. Okay, so we're going to rich field of view again. And I don't actually run the exact same field of view in every single camera, nor do I run the exact same field of view in every single car. Much, of the, much depends on the visibility of the windscreen of whatever car I'm driving. As I said, the Lexus is particularly bad when you zoom it in. There's other cars that have a very good visibility like the Porsche or the McLaren. And I would say, obviously fiddle around with that. Um, so again, I'm gonna move this down, maybe to, might drop this on 48. Straight away, I'm gonna give myself more height because I've always wanted to be a tall guy. I'm only five foot eight. I've always wanted a bit of height, lads. Um, and then again, with the distance, you can move the distance back. And the, the good thing about this camera is you can, You've got this look with wheel feature, which now if you're on a single screen like myself, um, you know, it's very hard to see what's to the left or to the right. You kind of have to rely on the radar quite a lot, which in many racing um, circumstances, it makes you sort of back out of moves because you don't want to, sometimes you can't, you just can't see the person who's next to you. But with look with wheel, I don't tend to pull it up too high. There are people that run it a lot higher than I do. I tend to run mine about 10%, but 
So for argument's sake, let's put this up to 20, 25% and see what happens when we go through corners. So I'm going to put that up. I'm also going to put the um, dashboard display HUD on. So as this dashboard is sort of cut off from the camera, um, we're going to get the full display so we can see everything we need to see. And driver, hands and wheel. Now, me personally, I've got my own wheel. I, I probably don't need to see the, the, the wheel inside the car. But if I did, I would probably have it to the wheel only. I don't really want the hands. So we'll maybe we'll try that. Um, let's exit. Let's get back to driving the car. Uh. much closer towards the road so much more visibility and it takes time to get used to it you know your left is invalidated please try to stay on the track right. i wasn't so understeer i might be able to do a decent lap lads um let's go back in again now you can see if you wanted to sort of pitch your your head down and maybe put even more height into the car you can do that there's so many ways to get the the perfect setting some people might want to see more of the side window so you just literally move the distance back but once you move the distance the distance back you're not actually affecting your field of view the track still seems as close but you're just giving yourself more leeway to look through you know the left hand window and give yourself a little bit of visibility from cars that might be attacking from that side um again the motion didn't didn't really get to see how how much different this uh look with wheel was so we're gonna we're gonna really exaggerate it let's go up to 70 percent um i wouldn't recommend this it probably makes you a bit dizzy Once we get to a tight corner, you should really see what the look of wheel does. It, you can see it really cracks the neck of the driver, so it looks as if you're looking towards the apexes. I don't like it too much. Uh, if you're someone who's really into the every part of realism see that that's just way too much i couldn't even judge the corner some people really love the realism and i guess it's sort of you know kind of like having a vr without the vr i wouldn't recommend running it that high personally i would probably say max i would go to is probably like 30 or 35 i don't think you want to be going above that um but yeah that's that's mainly what i do with Field of view. Maybe we can check out a couple of cars. What visibility looks like in a couple of cars. Um, let's check out the Lexus because I did say it's one of them cars where I, I find the visibility really hard. So here we are with the Lexus, and straight away for me, one, I'm too low in the car. It just, yeah, just definitely needs sorting out. So let's go into the view settings. You can see it on 54 at the moment, so we're going to move that in. You can see for some reason, like the, the perception in this car seems already more zoomed in than what the Audi was. Okay, so I'm going to up the height. Um, probably take it down to maybe like 43. Um, pull the distance back a little bit. You can see the bar here is huge. <laughs> Absolutely huge in this car. So if you wanted to look out the window, look how far you'd have to go back. And that, that's why I said that the Lexus has... It's a little bit more difficult to get the settings right in this car but um once you sort of know that the the process of trying to find the right balance to get the the correct field of view you sort of know how you like it um as i said the lexus for me was always a difficult one I'm, that's why i very you very rarely see me drive this car okay um again let's go to got our dashboard on So yeah, this is this will be about what I would say is okay for the Lexus. But let's let's check the other camera, which would be this one. 
and yeah for me not that great again not that great personally was this the right one? i don't think this is the right one yeah this this to me this is terrible now what's the difference in the perception of speed I feel like I'm sat back so far. Then you look at this and look how much more zoomed in you are. Look how much, look how much closer you are to the track. That's definitely just going to aid your accuracy in driving. So let's go back to the other camera. And we definitely need to fix this. Okay, so FOV again, we'll bring that down. Um, you can see even at even at 38, the distance doesn't seem that bad because you're able to sort of see through the, the side window. Um, you, you could zoom this back even further if you wanted to. I like a little bit more height, as you already know. Um, I think around 40, 42 is good. But I'm going to zoom the distance in a little bit. And for me, this is like pretty much perfect for me. Okay, this is how I like sort of my, my camera. I like to be pretty close to the front of the car. And I just feel like it just, you know, it helps you with your accuracy. It helps you, you know, being able to repetitively hit the same parts of the track which is where you're going to get your consistency from it helps you improve your pace personally for me it helped me improve my pace um, when i first jumped in the game i just used the default cameras and once i found out about you know learning how to really manipulate the fov to suit my situation on my tv which is a 27 inch um that's when i started to get the best out of myself and of course the cars that i was driving so i hope this video has helped you guys out um those are the FOVs that I use typically, as I said, I don't use the same one in every car, but that is my process to rate in the FOV for particular cars that I may drive. So yeah, hope, hope it's helped you guys out. Anyway, it's Crypto TMG, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to catch my videos first, and peace! Remember guys, if you want to purchase the setups in these videos, all you have to do is hit the link in the description below. Alternatively, you can go into setbase.com, search up Crypto TMG, and you can find all the setups that I made. If you want to be a repeat buyer, you can also become a member on my YouTube channel or you can become a member on my Patreon channel and that way you can get all the setups that I put out on a daily, weekly basis, okay? Anyway, it's Crypto TMG. Peace.